very much for this very interesting conference. It's always very important for all of us, especially for those who are who work in the ministries, uh, to participate in such events and just to see the practices of each other. Uh, I was, I think, the only one who, when our Thai colleague uh, told us that he was only two, th uh, two months uh, of appointment, I was the only one to say my condolences. <laughs> because maybe I understand more about it than <laughs> what, what the ministry work is. So, of course, we have uh, also, uh, we're facing uh, the similar uh, problems and the similar things that, for example, our colleagues from Thailand and uh, from India, because of our scales, uh, 16 million pupils in our schools, so 43,000 schools, uh, many of them rural schools with small uh, quantity of children. Uh, the, maybe the only difference is that our dimension uh, well, when you when, when you fly from Moscow to New York, you, you spend eight hours in plane, you, and you pass over European countries, Atlantic Ocean, Canada. When you fly from Moscow to, for example, Kamchatka, you spend nine hours in the plane, and it's always Russia downstairs. <laughs> uh, so uh, the dimension of our territory is also uh, one of the challenges that we should uh, cope with, and we see that, well, the digital epoch, the 21st century, gives us a lot of opportunities uh, in, in this way, because just to, uh, is the, be uh, the digital uh, technologies are the best instrument uh, just to, uh, um, uh, to supply the equal uh, right, uh, the equal access to the high quality education for uh, both uh, those who live in big cities and those who live in rural, uh, in rural uh, places and study in small rural schools. Uh, I had another uh, idea just to share with you when I was listening <coughs> to all of us, and maybe it's uh, maybe to share it with you now before I begin my presentation. Uh, we are all of us were speaking about that. Well, the a main goal and the main task of the educational system is just to prepare our kids for the future, uh, for the life of the 21st century, for the techno new technological era, and so on and so forth. Um, when I'm, uh, when I'm, for example, speaking to our opponents or to our uh, deputies, uh, members of the parliament who normally criticize us for everybody, for everything, and when I heard, hear the question to journalists, when I hear the question and how the ministry and how the educational system, what is doing just to, to prepare the kids for the life of the future, I ask them another question, and please describe me the life of the future. You know, I never get the answer. <laughs> And it's one of the problems, it's the main challenges that we're facing, that we, frankly speaking, we don't know for to which life we're preparing the children who are now getting inside the school, into the schools. Uh, and uh, this, I think that uh, coping with this challenge and this problem, uh, we should uh, find a compromise between uh, new methods of teaching, uh, creative thinking, uh, critical thinking on one, one hand. But uh, we shouldn't forget uh, about the traditional values and basic knowledges that will be always helpful for our kids in the future. Uh, I'm convinced and we're convinced that uh, in spite of the fact how the world will be tomorrow uh, and of the role of the uh, computer technologies and the, uh, you know, intellect, digital intellect, and so on and so forth. I think that the uh, such things that's, that we should teach, that two plus two is four, that love and hate, uh, the good and the bad, which will always be uh, very important for our kids. So uh, to jump high, we should have a strong basis on the, uh, downstairs. So that's why uh, we always looking for new technologies, new methods, or working with our teachers just for them to improve their, their, uh, their methods of, 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 of learning. We, don't, we try not to forget on, of our basic knowledges and traditional, traditional values that we are convinced will be always important in 20, 21st, and even 22nd century. I hope so. I hope that in the 20, even in 22nd century, love will be as important uh, the good things will be important, and so that's why we <laughs> shouldn't forget about, for example, Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Leon Tolstoy, and other <laughs> and other uh, treasures that we have in our uh, Russian culture and in uh, in the in the world culture. So uh, let's go to the now to the methods and the ways how we are trying to uh, to uh, to face these challenges. Uh, 
um, this. Mm -hmm. This is a slide too, yes. Mm -hmm. The Russian education system is changing its approaches to general education standards, aiming to prepare people for life in the new information-rich society. As part of the implementation of this new course, a new task is set to educate young citizens uh, in a way that will enable them, after finishing school, to continue to learn and grow uh, on their own and to think out of the box. Uh, creative and critical thinking is a must uh, for success in the modern world. It's possible to teach. Uh, it's possible to teach school students to think creatively. PISA uh, 2021 gives the positive response to this question, and uh, to think critically is, for our, uh, from our point of view, is to be curious, to formulate questions, uh, to search for answers, to identify the causes and consequences of the facts, to doubt common truths to form and know uh, and uh, own point of view on different uh, on and defend it with logical arguments to have ability to listen to different opinions of the opponents uh, try to comprehend to take them into account when developing a common solution the school should be uh, should not teach for the whole life but should teach uh, to learn uh, to see the flow of information critically to stimulate students interest in creative and intellectual activity the school should teach the students to use arguments in debates, to separate facts and assumptions, uh, to separate responsible and unresponsible value judgment, to see casual relationship, and to find the mistake in the students' materials. At the federal level, the basic document has been adopted that defines the structure and the content of principal education programs, target outcomes of education, and the conditions of the implementation of educational programs is the federal state educational standard. It's a, after the law on education, federal law of education is the second main, uh, most important document uh, that guides the work of all the uh, education system, because for us, it's uh, um, a document that shows uh, the, um, what we call uh, the state guarantee, what the, ba uh, the basic knowledge is that the kids will get uh, when, the, uh, when, uh, when they're in, at, at school. So this is the basic. It not means that it's, it's everything that, we, that they should know, but the basis. Equal for everybody, because in our uh, dimensions, in our scales, it's very important to guarantee uh, the same basic level. For everybody, uh, both Moscow, St. Petersburg, or Kamchatka, or far rural schools. The main goal of the federal state educational center is to make sure that every child has equal opportunities in terms of getting a quality school uh, education, provide state guarantees for the quality of school education through the use of standard requirements for the conditions of implementation of principal educational programs, their structures and educational outcomes for each program, and ensure the preservation of a nation-wide uh, education space. It's one. Uh, it's another term that we're using, national-wide education space. It's, it means that uh, the same space uh, in which the kids uh, are living, the teachers are working all over the country. In order to implement the federal state education program, schools must develop their main curriculum based on the main educational program model. Uh, that they will use in their work and that must include an educational plan, schedules of classes, curricula for specific subjects, courses, uh, models, and other components, as well as evaluation and method methodological materials. Uh, the Federal State Education Standard describes three main types of requirements for the accreditation and licen uh, licen licensing. Requirements for the structure of principal educational program, including requirements for the ratio of the specific parts of each curriculum to total size of the curriculum, as well as the ratio of the required classes for the main curriculum, to elective classes picked by participants of the educational process. It uh, now have the proportion of 70 to 30. Just the 70 is the uh, basic uh, uh, material, and the 30, as we call the, uh, the variety, the, well, the right of the, each school uh, to include their own uh, content just uh, related to the necessities of the region, of the, uh, of the school, of uh, whatever. Uh, requirements for the conditions under which principal education programs must be implemented, including requirements for human and financial resources, equipment, and other elements. 
and requirements to the outcomes of completing the principal educational programs. It means that, well, after the, uh, the kids are graduating the school, we have the uh, unified exam for every, all the schools, it's federal exam, so uh, all of them should be prepared for it. Just it's, uh, despite of the fact that schools are under, even not regions, but even, uh, municipal, we have 85 regions, we're a federation country, 85 members of federation, and 22,000 municipals. So the schools are inside there, but, but the exam is equal for everybody. So that's important about, uh, when we're speaking about requirements to the outcomes. Uh, play, presently, new federal state education standards have been drafted and put up for public discussion. Uh, the plan is to dub them in uh, December and to introduce them in three or four years just to give the country to prepare uh, for the new standards. Uh, the federal state education standard describes the requirements for the outcomes of completing the principal education programs used by the, uh, the educational organizations. This include requirements for the outcomes of completing personal outcomes, meta subject or let's call it in this interdisciplinary and disciplinary learning outcomes. Uh, meta subject is the key uh, outcomes for what we to, to my mind for, uh, for what we're thinking about the critical uh, thinking because the critical thinking and the um, all the uh, uh, subjects are inside there. So uh, while preparing the standards, the new variation of standards, uh, we spent a lot of things arguing and discussing with a lot of experts on meta subject. It was a big discussion. In general, the federal state uh, educational standard is like a constitution. You know, we will be. Uh, the uh, hours of fighting of different experts in my cabinet, for example, it, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing, but well, uh, uh, my first profession is diplomacy, so I managed that. <laughs> uh, uh, in addition, special attention is devoted in the federal state education standards to the use of project management and research methods in education to foster joint efforts aimed at solf solving specific problems through cooperation among the students, between the students and the teacher, between the students, the teacher and the parents. That's also very important. Project working, uh, working in team is one of the things that we should uh, introduce more in our uh, learning process. Uh, the key issues related to shaping creativity and critical thinking are described in the requirements for the so-called meta-subject outcomes, I've recently said. Meta-subject outcomes of, the completing the, uh, of completing the principal education programs must reflect uh, many things. I'll spend several minutes just to naming the basic one of them. So, uh, basic collaboration skills. Uh, define the goals of joint activities. Participate in learning dialogue. Uh, operate skills in joint activities, negotiation, allocation of responsibilities, following directives, leadership, self-supervision. Uh, self Display readiness to constructively resolve conflicts and disagreements. IT skills. Independently decide what information uh, needs to be retrieved from the sources based on the type of learning task at hand. Identify the dif uh, difference uh, between core and additional information. Determine logical links and relation uh, uh, presented in the text. Identify true and false judgments. Observe information uh, security roles. Another uh, is general learning skills, including cognitive skills, uh, specifically convert a practical situation into a learning ob objective. Ask right questions. Make assumption on the causes uh, of differences between the target state of a process or object and its uh, current state. Uh, there are much more, uh, but just for you to understand. Uh, uh, after that, we're speaking on learning skills, we are speaking about uh, regulatory skills or learning and cognition skills such as independently plan the activities, evaluate the resources needed to achieve learning objections, uh, monitor the outcomes, foresee difficulties that might be en encountered uh, when trying to achieve a learning objective and so on and so forth. Uh, besides, there are communication skills such as uh, to able uh, to read the text, re uh, remedy communication gaps, identify all details important for addressing the key issue. Identify the content of presentation in accordance with its genre and audience it is being presented to. So uh, there are a lot of meta-subject uh, uh, things, meta-subject outcomes that are now introduced in the federal standard. So it's uh, reaching is it. It's a must for every school, every teacher. 
Uh, it's easy to, to teach children when you've managed to pick their interest. Uh, more varied activities are needed with less emphasis put on ready-made plans, memorization of rules and formula. Classes should emphasize practical independent activities of, studi of students which, uh, with a variety of creative tasks. Uh, there is growing uh, need for people capable of uh, thinking creatively out of the box and solving challenges while uh, there is a less need for people who are simply trained to perform the same type of task over and over again. And it's a general phrase, but well, I should repeat it because well, it's a common knowledge and well, it's a, it's a reality that we should be prepared. It's one of the few things that we know about the future. <laughs> um, we expect youth to take the initiative uh, to self-develop and think out of the box. That's our. Uh, uh, so uh, what we're doing, uh, in addition uh, to the school uh, learning, school training, and the federal education standards, we're increasing uh, the number, uh, the role of the additional education. Uh, just our. Uh, uh, for us, it's important not only what our, uh, what the, what our kids are doing inside the school, but besides what they are doing after the school. Uh, so uh, our aim is just for uh, to make this additional education uh, accessible for 100% of our uh, school children, for the 60 million. Now we're about 80 and something. It means all the types, from arts, sports, uh, and other projects, uh, just uh, for them to be active, because it's very important for, uh, for us just uh, for them to try different things, just to discover as soon as, as possible their abilities, the subjects in w in which they are more talented and more capable, and just to give them the possibility to uh, discover their talents even more. It's just uh, like uh, early professional uh, studies. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and it's very important, uh, besides for them, uh, just uh, not only uh, to, to give them the possibility to uh, um, participate in social life, for example, we are now uh, um, doing a lot in involving kids, for example, in volunteering. It's one of the other things that because not, not only knowledge, but the education of the values. You know, uh, in, in English, the education is one word. In Russian, we, in Russia, we have обучение и воспитание, just education of the moral values and, and just learning. So for us, education is education of moral uh, values plus learning. The moral values are in the first place. Just the school uh, is not only the place where they get knowledge. For us, the school is the place where, well, where we form a citizen. It's a, a common task of the school with the parents. So we're not only preparing the uh, people for the future who have knowledges and, the, and, the, and they're able to just uh, to operate with them, self-learning, if we prepare a computer genius and uh, some scientific genius without moral values, um, I think that the world will go not in the right uh, way. Just as not only giving them the arm but and, and the possibility, but we just, I stress once again, we, sh we should show them what's bad and what's good. And uh, such basic uh, moral values, we should, we should give them. So... Uh, not only at school, but after the school, volunteering, so on and so forth. We're trying to educate them as uh, responsible uh, members of the society. <coughs> but um, thanks to our own Indian colleague, to his presentation, I see that we all are working in additional education in, uh, <coughs> uh, in the same, uh, in the same uh, way, because we also launched uh, several <coughs> uh, projects. Uh, uh, but they're more, uh, they're, uh, more oriented to the uh, science and technologies. For example, one of them is uh, a so-called Quantorium. is a system of uh, kids' technological parks uh, that are now created in all the big cities and small cities. And we're going to all the cities with the population of 60,000 and more. Uh, just as such centers of supplementary, supplementary education where children can not only learn new technologies but also uh, get to, to invent real products 
uh, that can be used in practice as well as a design uh, as design computer programs. The main goal of such technological clusters is not so much to develop skills in specific subjects, but rather promote creative and critical thinking, as well as teach them to work in a team. Uh, these centers don't have traditional classes. Uh, children are presented with basic information about the subject in a few hours, and then they work on their own projects uh, with uh, tutors, with mentors, uh, with um, uh, teachers who come from the university or technological companies. They work in the laboratories. They work on um, biotechnologies, IT, uh, robotics, and whatever. Uh, so there are uh, 13 basic areas now in the quantoriums, by, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell them ab about them in the future. Uh, in addition, uh, we are creating uh, mobile quantoriums, just uh, taking into consideration the country is very big and we have a lot of rural areas uh, with small schools. We are now launching such uh, projects with mobile quantoriums that travel between the small rural, rural areas, they have inside there the, the basic things for such uh, laboratories, and so the kids can work inside there with, with the tutors uh, on, um, on, different, on different things. That's the same thing that our Indian colleague said. Uh, I believe that in the small cities and small villages, we can find uh, new geniuses, the talented people who, can be, who will be a Nobel Prizes in the future. So it's our task to find them, to give them the possibility to show their abilities. And uh, now the, <clears throat> uh, in, I've, I've mentioned that uh, this project started in 2015, has uh, 13 basic areas. It's biology, space exploration. Mm -hmm. They're making small rocket launchers, and they're launching even small uh, Sputniks. Uh, satellites, uh, automotive industry, aerospace, energy, robotics, geography, ITC, industrial design, lasers, uh, virtual and augmented reality, nanotechnologies, and neurosciences. So a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Astrakhan, is a city in the south of Russia, and I visited one of these quantoriums. So I've seen kids from 13, 14, and 15 year old working. For example, um, uh, it's it's very awkward for me to visit such places because uh, you understand that the question you are asking them is very silly for them, and you don't understand any nothing from the, what they're answering you. So uh, they are, for example, working in a laboratory in nanotechnologies. When well, I came there and said, ha, hi, kids, well, what are you doing here? I first of all understood that I, am, I was interrupting something important. So uh, the kid from 13 year old began to answer me. Uh, there was no word understood. <laughs> uh, so it was difficult to make an intelligent smiling face for the photo. Uh, but you know, I try to avoid by the moment visiting such places because we understand that, well, thanks God, uh, our kids are better than we are, even now. Uh, in addition, we also launched, uh, and besides I would like to say that Quantorium is, not, is one of the leading, but not the only one uh, project in this sphere, because we have IT cubes, we have uh, many, many others. But uh, our aim just to give, after the school, the possibility for the kids just to be involved in the education, creation, and uh, just showing their talents showing their talents. As soon as, I stress once again, as soon as we find, there, there are, all the kids are talented. It's the, our, us, our aim is just to see in what area specifically they are talented in. So as soon as we discover it, we give them the possibility to make progress in this sphere. And besides, in addition, in uh, 2019, uh, the Ministry of Education launched a new project called Monitoring and Accessing Functional Literacy. It's very important, besides uh, we are in this conference, but uh, apparently we asked there was a PGB Board of PISA, and well, of course, it's very important for us. That, uh, the functional literacy is very important for all of us, just how we cope with the 2021. Uh, as part of the project assessment is being developed for the kids of the secondary school from the fifth to ninth year. Uh, students, uh, <coughs> recommend, uh, based on recommendations, have been developed for the education for, uh, for how to foster creativity in school students. 
And these materials are being introduced in the learning process through the advanced vocational training programs for educators. Of course, I think it's a matter of other conference, uh, uh, just uh, the point how we prepare the teachers for the future, educating educators and so on. Uh, I've heard questions to my colleagues before that, but I think it's very important because uh, another number is, for example, in Russia, there are two million teachers. And just it's, uh, and it's another challenge, not only introduce new technologies, but to just to make, uh, to uh, give the possibility to these two million teachers ju just to use these technologies. I'm, uh, besides, uh, for example, uh, I think that we have the same problems uh, uh, with the introduction of the uh, digital technologies, we should fight also the fears inside the teachers community because uh, you know, uh, some crazy people from the IT industry begin to uh, begin to say, well, with the introduction of uh, IT technologies, the te uh, we won't need schools and teachers. Uh, so, and when we come to the school with the digital technologies, the teachers will say, we don't want it because we'll be fired. So, you should explain for yourself, of these crazy uh, people from the Silicon Valley, please, uh, Please don't make public uh, announcements in the areas you don't understand. <laughs> After that, you go to the teachers and say, don't listen to these crazy guys. They are very talented in making the digital things, but they don't think how this uh, education system works. Uh, because I, I was on one conference with these guys, and they well, are telling me, well, well, with this, all the technologies uh, we want in schools, the kids will be uh, indiv learning individually at home. I, told, I asked him, uh, how old are, uh, are your kids? Uh, 10 years old. I told him, uh, is your wife working? He said, yes. Yeah. Will you leave your kid alone at home for a whole day when he's 10 years old? Please ask your wife first, her opinion. I think that you'll get the iPad on your, on your head. Uh, <laughs> so, of course, we, um, working with these new realities, we should uh, be, make a great work especially the ministries, just to explain the good things and fighting the, the rumors and the bad expectations. And so it's a very complicated thing, so I think that will be, it will be good just to uh, discuss on teachers and uh, to, share, uh, <coughs> to share experiences in preparation of the teachers apart because it's a, it's a separate block of our, our work. Besides. Uh, I've been using the formulas and finishing, I would like to say that for us, the education, a system of education is based on three elephants. Well, we're enlightened people, we know that the, the world is based on three elephants. Uh, so the teacher, the content, and the infrastructure. It's the three main uh, areas what that, uh, where we are working. But I'm convinced that the teacher is the main one because if you don't have infrastructure, if you don't have contact, if there is a good teacher, he had everything here, he can give you a lesson. You can build, build a 21st century school with all the IT, you can get the best manuals, digital manuals, but if there is no teacher, there is no education. Thank you very much.